My name is Oliver Lang. I'm with Airbus Defense and Space. We are a, a one of the established providers for Earth observation data, satellite data, and also analytics. And the title today is Earth Observation for Infrastructure Monitoring. Um, I want to approach this um, topic from our users' perspectives, and I was picking up uh, four projects examples now in the following, um, each addressing a specific asset, um, an asset which was the reason for our clients to use Earth observation data to solve their solution, to monitor a specific infrastructure element, and to do this with um, Earth observation data. So. The first one is, the first asset is um, they were, Earth observation supports to extend the period of observation into the past, but also into the future. So we speak about observation periods of years and even decades, as we will see. Earth observation data allows to extend the spatial coverage of the observation. It's not only a 1D or a point measurement, it's a spatial measurement, a 2D, and with a temporal component, even a 3D uh, measurement. Earth observation allows to do analytics in areas which are difficult to go to, to, to access due to security reasons, to, to, because it's a remote area uh, for regulatory reasons. And we will see finally an example on how Earth observation data allows to derive detailed information. So I have four examples. In common to all examples is that I they are based on a in technique called INSAR, interferometric uh, SAR, allowing to, to generate surface deformation information on a millimeter level. We have just heard about the technique in the talk before. And uh, let's have a look for the first one. This is the city of uh, uh, Böbling. It's a map, a deformation map, an average map. And we see these blue shapes. This is an uplifting area here, misled. Drilling, geothermal drilling led to, a, led to an uplift of these city areas by 30, 40 centimeters. So we were asked to monitor that. But not all, and, and th those uplift, of course, caused the uh, damages on, on, the, on, on, the, on, on the surface, cracks in houses and so on. What we did is to monitor um, retrospectively. Um, we were asked to do a cause study to um, find a correlation between the drilling time and the drilling location and the actual um, start of the uplift. And um, we do this, uh, did this um, for, a, for a, a, a set of six, for, for six different um, satellite missions. And we were stitching together the time series we were creating for every of these, every single point um, uh, for a, on, on, on a long time scale of 32 years. We starting from 1992 up to um, until today. So Earth observation here allows to follow the, the uplift, so the, the surface deformation for three decades by applying this technique. And we, it was very clear um, to identify at which, at which t point in time the uplift started. It was here 2006, uh, seven around. Uh, we, were catch we were catching this with the Envisat mission, but we were um, monitoring until today using high resolution Terrasa data. So here, the period observation um, this extension to the past and into the future was only possible with re by, by using remote sensing data. Next example, focusing on the aerial coverage. Here we are uh, traveling to Australia, Sydney. So a client was asking us to monitor um, surface deformation in the area of Sydney and where uh, massive tunneling activities were ongoing. So in parallel, we were asked to monitor um, what, what is the phenomena on, on ground? And what we see here is not uplift, we see subsidence. Uh, it's not surprising. Um, this, orange, um, this orange pattern identify or indicates where um, the drilling activities are ongoing. But if we zoom into this area and just sort out or filter out those movements which have a, a certain limit, so two millimeters and more, uh, we got this kind of picture, um, consisting of thousands of single points indicating where um, the, the surface substance exceeds a, a threshold of two millimeters. And this spatial extension we have here um, is 
exceeded the expected um, area, this expected corridor where the, the substance was expected. And this was a very important input um, to um, evaluate whether, um, that, whether the, the, the construction activities um, are causing phenomena which were expected or not, and um, to potentially to initiate countermeasurements. So, and again, here we have the third component, which is the time where we can even uh, follow the, the tunneling activities in time. We have a, a, re a, a red and a, and, a, and a green timeline here, and we see the red timeline over three years, which is dropping first, and then later on the, the green timeline, um, just indicating that the drilling machine was advancing from, from west to east and um, was hitting this point later in time than that. So, again, um, as uh, uh, spatial coverage, high resolution, and a temporal um, a temporal history is in the uh, is is supported by Earth observation data. Third example is an example where it was very difficult to to access the terrain. This is in a, a research project uh, we were conducting. In, in Kyrgyzstan, where we are asked to monitor a dam, a hydropower dam, but not only the, the, the infrastructure dam itself, also the surroundings, are there any geohazards? And um, yeah, we see here some um, red, f red areas in, in the top. These are geohazards sliding hills. And the M41, which is a, which is a road, here in, in the picture you can see the road, and the, this geohazard, the sliding hills, are endangering not only the road stability, but also the facilities of the, of the hydropower dam. And um, this, we were equipping, this was a, 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 a research consortium, and the, in the consortium we were equipping um, the, um, the area and the dam also with in situ measurement capabilities, differential GPS, strain meters, and, and whatever. Um, remote sensing was the only technique which was running continuously over the whole project lifetime of two years. The, the in situ measurements either had issues with power supply, with information transport, so Wi-Fi connection, things like that, uh, not given that it's very hard to in, do the installation to get the permission. So again, here remote sensing can be an, an, an add-on, an asset supporting um, infrastructure monitor, even on a, on a small scale. And last but not least, this is a bridge example. Again, a research project. We were uh, part of the, of the team. Um, here it is about the high level of detail we can achieve. So we were testing with a, a different um, input image resolution types. We were testing with Sentinel, um, but uh, at the end it we turned out with Terrasat, the it's a satellite we as Airbus distribute uh, as a commercial provider. Uh, we were choosing the highest resolution mode with, with below one meter ground resolution because with this resolution mode we were able to generate this motion maps again. And what we see here on the bridge this color or rainbow shape. This is thermal extension, so um, which is expected, of course, uh, just by temperature impact. Um, but the the question here was: Can remote sensing support structural health monitoring on a larger scale for bridge monitoring? And how can because bridges are moving? We see this. This is normal. This is not not a not a. Uh, a critical behavior, um, but what we did, we equipped the um, the bridge with a, a tachymeter. Um, we're monitoring the pillars, and our uh, our our uh, engineering partner, the TU Berlin, was calculating a theoretical model how the how the extension, the movement of the bridge, shall be. And this is plotted all together. Um, the the model in in in, in the model in blue. Um, the tachymetry in, in orange, and the INSAR in, in, in black. Uh, and you see a lot of measure, we were able to generate a lot of measurement points from, from the remote sensing technique. And what we were able to show, this kind of indirect measurement is a technique how, how remote sensing can support um, structural health monitoring for bridges. Uh, we can 
by, by overlaying the expected and the monitored behavior, uh, we can evaluate whether the movement is in the, in the level of expectation or not. If not, this could um, account for countermeasurement. At least it's a massive support to, um, to a prioritization on which bridges to address first with the countermeasures or it, for um, um, inspection on site. So as we have allowed in Germany, we have tens of thousands of bridges which needs to, to be maintained. Uh, Earth observation provides a tool to support the selection on which to um, address first. This was the, the final example. Um, I hope this was inspiring. What well, we can clearly say, Earth observation adds value to uh, a lot of use cases. Um, if you feel inspired, come to our booth, the, the other hall over there, or ask any questions. Thank you. <laughs>